Morena Fano, this is Off Grid Native. Today we're going to be talking about one of the really important things for living off grid, and that's uh, water. How to utilize a stream or a spring and uh, get that from the spring to your house. And we'll talk about a few little pitfalls that could happen on the way and a few little tips for making life easier. So the first thing we're going to do is check our water sources and we're going to have a look if we've got a river on our property or do we have a spring. And if we do have either of those, what do they look like in the middle of summer in a drought? Now what we're going to be doing is a gravity fed system which means is that our spring or our river has to be above where we're going to catch the water and go into our house. So we're going to go spring, tank, house. It's all flowing downwards. This is the spring that I used and if you look at that you can't see any mo water movement at all. So it's a very slow flow coming in. The spring has a lot of advantages. And one big advantage is flooding. Because these are coming from under the ground, you're not going to get a big river blowing all your pipe away and splitting it up and spreading it all down the river when you have a big flood. One important thing to have is a filter. And that just catches any leaves, uh, debris and dirt that's going into your line because that'll go into your tank and feed into your house. So good thing to have and it just stops you from having to get up and do more maintenance like clogged up pipes. Stops all that. Um, in some of them we've had eels um, swim into the lines and get stuck in the lines so also stops that you don't get any of that sort of stuff so really good thing to have filter another thing is that make sure that all of your pipes are the same size so this is a 20 mil hose that I'm using and so I use 20 mil fittings just to give you an idea the average garden hose is 15 mil and it'll be written on the side of all these so you can just make sure that you get that because one thing people do is they get some 25 pieces from their mate and they get some 20 more pieces try and put them all together and realize they don't fit so it doesn't work so down there's our 20 more hose that feeds into the spring and we're just going to chuck on this 20 mil filter so if we look before at our spring we could see that it didn't look like it had much flow nearly not moving at all and we come down and i've got the split in the hose and we can see the flow coming out of that spring. As it's gravity fed, if I was to lift this above the uh, dam height, you'll see that it'll start to get less and less. And as we get to there, that'll stop. So that's how we know we're in a gravity fed water system. And you can also come back down. And as soon as you come down, that'll start flowing again. So that's our 20 mil hose. I always have a break maybe 5 or 10 meters from the dam source and that's because if I'm doing any maintenance, fixing it up, um, I can take this off and then any mud or dirt can just all flow out here. I can hook that back up now. Pipe here that's coming from the spring straight from the creek into this tank. This is a thousand litre tank, I think we got this for 50 bucks. Um, and that's used for feeding baby calves. Colostrum was in that tank. It's important to know what's in your tank. With that 1,000 litres, I can send that all over the place, all different places in that. So that's good to know. You could obviously put in a 20,000 litre tank if you wanted to. But that runs all year round. And um, I find 1,000 is more than enough for us because it's continuous. Another good thing is that if you look at the top of there, the water's overflowing. So I always try and put that overflow back into the stream. You know, you, there's no point starving all the fish in that and putting it somewhere else. If you can, put it back into the stream so that you're also giving back another 20 mil connection coming off uh, the tank that feeds into the house. I have taps that you could turn off and on. And I think there's a real important part and the reason why is because it means you can do maintenance on things and you're not going to have water squirting everywhere. 
you know, especially at the start, probably if you're hooking everything up yourself, you might have problems here and there that you didn't put a tap on tight enough or something like that. And um, it's really good to be able to turn it off, work on it, and it stops all the water squirting in your face as you're trying to do it. So here's some of our fittings, and they are all going off to different places. One thing you want to do is run a few different pipes coming from your 1000 litre tank or whatever tank you got and the reason that you want to do that is because you know when you're in the shower and someone turns on the cold tap and then it goes real hot or something like that that's because you don't have enough water so off that 1000 litre tank if you run individual hoses for say your shower maybe your kitchen tap then um, it'll give them a strong flow and you won't get that happening and for other ones like the washing machine and the outdoor tap, I might just have them all coming off the same one, maybe three or four, because I don't really care if I'm watering the garden and a little bit of that happens. So we've got from the tank to another 20 mil hose, and that comes straight to our kitchen. Basically, we just have a little fitting like this, you know. You put that into the 20 mil hose, and one thing when you're trying to get your fittings all tight, is because this is alkathene plastic, you heat up a jug, put the alkathene in the in the mug for, I don't know, a minute or so, let it soften up, and then you push it on hard, and then thread these in, and that'll give you a good seal. But basically, that's it, the setup for the tap. So we've got a pipe that comes up, and you basically just turn the tap, and that's it, your water coming from your spring to your tank to your house. So it's real simple, Anyone can do it, you know, at most hardware places, you can just ask the manager and they'll tell you, they'll just tell you, I'll say, I want to do this, 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 and this, and I want it all in 20 mil, 25 mil, whatever, and they'll make it happen. So it's pretty simple. One thing you want to do is that if you want to get your water tested, um, and reasons why you might want to test it, because you might want to see oh, how much E. coli, which is like um, animal poo, is in your water you might be in the area high in copper and we have one area near us that's high in arsenic just naturally the rocks breaking and arsenic comes out of the rocks so this is not a man-made thing it's just natural but these things do occur and sometimes you just want to know all of the good health benefits that are in your water too so if you're in Aotearoa you can ring up Hills Laboratory and what you want to do is say that it's for agriculture, say it's for watering your garden and you won't be drinking it because if you say that you're drinking it, it's your drinking water then they have an obligation to report you to the Ministry of Health and tell you that so a way around that is to say it's for your garden and you can get a report of all of the minerals and things that are in your water cool, so that's basically it real simple, hope you get something from that whanau um, yeah, if you like these videos, like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions about how you're getting on, um, what things that you might need to know, or something that's happened in your situation that I didn't cover, then um, chuck it up, and if I can, I'll get to it and answer it, get back to you.